Hello, welcome to church. My name is Phil. My name is Zed. How are you doing, Zed? I'm doing very well today. I'm really looking forward to, to what we've got going on today on Sunday. This is the first time on the pre-show, isn't it? It is. It is my first time. Yeah. So hello, everybody. I hope you're well. We should be really excited about Zed because he is... What's your role again, your title for your role? So I'm coming in as the global production lead for all three of our C3 locations. Yeah, so online might not see you much, but you'll be very much behind the scenes. Yeah. Making things sure, Absolutely. making things happen, <laughs> fixing problems. Well, we certainly hope so, anyway. But yeah, I'm the tech guy, so I'm normally the one by, yeah, behind the screen, oh, out of the way. <laughs> but yeah, so this is what I look like, everybody. I love that. And he should be helping online just thrive, really. And I'm really excited <laughs> that you're here. It's been fun getting to know you on team, and it's been a pleasure, really. Today is Sunday, it's time for church, so you know what to do. We want to ask you to share this uh, stream, like it. Um, I often share this stream to my stories, like mm. it's a really easy way to get people invited, to make people know that uh, there's church and that they can come along. So why don't you spend some time right now? Maybe say hello if you're new for the first time, comment on someone else's comment saying hello and just be interactive. Yeah, absolutely. We're, I'm really passionate about that, and we're really passionate about that. That's what it's all about. It's about community. So yeah, yeah get involved, everyone. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So today, um, we are going to be asking you a question that we normally ask, and this is a great way to get us in the mindset of worshiping, being grateful for um, all things that God has done for us in our lives. And it's a simple question this week. What has been um, something, uh, let's actually reframe it. What have you been thankful for this week? What have I been thankful for this week? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, one of the other roles I kind of do here at the church is as a youth leader. It's something I really, really love. And the youth ministry is just like really growing. Um, the kind of hours that we've kind of put into it as a team to see like non-Christians, Christians alike, they bring, bring new people every single week. We are like growing massively. And whether that's people that are come literally to, to know Jesus, to, to learn more about him, or, or simply just to have like a, a safe space for our young people just to come and have a few nice games and, you know, just a, a good community, a good environment for them to really get stuck in and learn kind of what church is about with all the, about all the kind of heavy services and stuff. So yeah, I'm just really excited about all the way the youth is growing, the ministry is growing, and just thankful for, for all the work we put in as a team that's really starting to like take off. So yeah, that's amazing. That is really cool. I love how passionate you are about youth and young people. Mm. And that's connected to your past and who you are really is your... Absolutely. Uh, it's part of your identity to be passionate mm. about youth. So I love Cheers. hearing how passionate you are. And immediately I can see your excitement rise and be like, yeah, youth, get involved. Absolutely. So I'm thankful this week for a person who really, really sadly died. Um, who is connected to C3 Church. And I'm so thankful that we as a family um, knew her and that she graced our lives. Mm. And we uh, might mention it in our service today, um, but I'm just so thankful that I knew her. It's always sad and really hard when something difficult like this yeah. happens. And um, we have been suffering this week, I think, not only with um, the people that knew her directly, but also it's just been sad, really, hasn't it, this week? Yeah. Yeah, a real sense of sorrow and heartbreak for someone that was really loved and valued in this yeah. community, for sure. And I'm really thankful that we loved her, we knew her, and that she was part of who we are. And I'm sure today, at some point, we will give thanks for her as well. Who have we got this week for our preach? We have guest speaker Natalie Runyon. Yes. We were really stressed, by the way. Her name has been said so many different so ways. So many different ways. So I was like, yeah, we're going to totally get this wrong or I, I don't know. But uh, um, yeah, hope it's right, Natalie. <laughs> and she is a pastor from Colorado New Life Church. And she's part of the family team there, creative um, pastoral team, which is a role we don't have. So I'm no, no. interested to hear what she does. And she's continuing our Roman series as we have gone over the peak and then slowly exiting out from the mountain, mm -hmm. uh, which is really exciting. Shall we pray to start our service? Do you want yeah, to pray? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I can pray. So um, Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to come and worship you, to know you, 
to, to spend time in your presence, Lord, free, freely. Um, Lord, I just pray for everyone in this, in this service or under the sound of my voice today, that, Lord, that they are blessed by what Natalie has to share, that, um, Lord, that you meet each one of them where they are and just help to show that you are working in their lives, that, Lord, that you see them for who they are, you value them, and, Lord, you are with them today and throughout this whole week. Lord, we bless you and we worship you today on this Sunday. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good Sunday. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Yeah!
Hey church, I want to encourage you today that you have the power to lift your voice and make God's praise known. You know, sometimes one of my objectives as a worship leader, I guess, is to encourage you to lift your voice, to encourage you to find your voice and lift your praise to God. We can often do that through the songs that we sing, but often I find sometimes we go, lift your voice, lift your praise, and we might get 30% uptake of people actually doing that. And one of the things that I've found in my life, if I want to increase my vocabulary of my praise to God, I need to get into Scripture. One of the best ways to do that is to go to the book of the Psalms. So right now as a church, as a body of Christ, together in unity, we're gonna put Psalm 89 up on the screen, a portion of it. And what I'd love us to do is to read together with a loud voice and to declare God's praise and to lift our voices, open our mouths together in unity and declare His praise. Can we read this together? Is that all right? One, two, three. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround Him. Who is like you, Lord, God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you. Come on, it is good for the body of Christ to lift their voice and to praise His Name. Come on.
scriptures, the word of the Lord that stands forever. It says this in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23 and 24. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. He will do it. Your salvation, or body, soul, and spirit is secured in Christ and he will do it. And yet, we live in this fallen world where what we know will one day be true in all its fullness, when every tear will be dried, when every body will be healed. Yet we live in this time where not every prayer that we pray gets answered like we wanted it to. But not every request we make comes back with the answer we expected. And it hurts. And we're confused. And we're disappointed. Don't be unreal. As a church, we've been praying for a young woman that's part of our C3 family. And the prayer that we prayed didn't get answered in the way we wanted it to. And Danny Cornwell, who many of you know, on Monday went to be with Jesus. She died. And we've been praying for healing from her cancer. And we're gutted. We're absolutely gutted. Now, honestly, this isn't rhetoric, this is reality. I believe Danny is healed. She's healed and whole in the presence of Jesus right now. I believe that. And that belief helps me and us in the loss that we feel. Because, yes, she's absent from the body. She's present with the Lord. But our mourning is because she ain't with us. She's particularly not with her husband, Brad. Those of you that don't know, Danny and Brad were our young adult pastors for a while here and they've gone to the United States and they've got so many of you that are good friends here. Her funeral service was actually yesterday. The cremation will be on Monday. Her mum and dad are there, her brother's there, some of Brad's family are there. Some of you watched it online, I know, because it was streamed yesterday. And then in a couple of months' time, when Brad is able, he wants us to have a celebration of life here at the C3 Center, to which you are all welcome, I think. I'll check that with Brad. But we're going to celebrate Danny's life. You know, we cannot pray for her anymore, other than remember her with thanks, because she is with her Lord. There's a picture of her. Look at that. That's how we know her. She's with her Lord, healed and whole. But we can pray for the family. And so we do in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we pray for Brad particularly. Comfort him. We can't touch him with our arms, but you can with yours. Because your arms are not too short to reach from heaven. Lord, we can FaceTime and we can speak to him. But sometimes in the middle of the night when he wakes, maybe no one is there with him, but you are for the mum and dad and for Aaron, Lord, and other relatives that are there, and family and friends here, Lord, that love her so much. Comfort them. Lord, we believe what we're singing. You're the restorer. You're the healer. You comfort those that mourn. And so, Lord, we've got lots of whys. Why this? Why that? Why now? Why not? But we turn our whys into worship of you. Jesus, you are Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing some of that song again. Amen.
Jesus, you are my peace, restorer, healer, beauty for ashes, your justice, mercy, flow like a river of peace. Jesus, you are my peace, you're my portion. Danny, she lived life to the full. Guys, that's what life is for doing. And there's only one person who can provide us with that life in all its fullness. Do you know his name? Uh, do you know his name? Uh, do you know his name? There's only one person that can provide us with that life in its fullness. And even in the midst of death, even in the valley of the shadow of death, we trust in him because he has conquered the grave. Amen. Come on, let's give him one round of applause. We praise you, risen Savior. Amen, amen. Please take your seats. Next weekend, we have a guest again with us because we're in the middle of a series on Romans. We're not doing Romans today, but we've got Krish Kandaya. But we've also got our vision offering next week. And I just want to remind you that our goal is £250,000 in this vision offering. We can do that. We can do that. Yes, we can. And it's not about equal giving. It's about equal sacrifice, that we will sacrifice to give. We will give away the first 10% outside of ourselves. We've shared with you some of the areas we're going to give it to by way of needing to meet repayments on mortgage and charity reserves and that kind of thing. Easter that's coming up for all our locations. We're going to use some of the vision offering towards our Easter locations. Get ready for that with the fly in the sky, cross equals heart and being in town and here and in Colchester and Bury St. Edmunds. And so we'll be putting money towards that. But we're also going to give it to buildings, which are really important. They're not everything, but they're important. I just want you to watch this little testimony of someone who saw the importance of coming into this building. Take a look. So I moved back to Cambridge um, about six years ago and my mum brought me to one of your Christmas shows. Um, I'd recently came back from a domestic violent relationship so I'd left my family for a long time so I was back she was doing like a nice family gathering um, at your Christmas shows and I, it, I was literally dumbstruck actually by how um, like happy and welcoming everybody was there um, I went away with a real good feel-good factor move on for like a few more years. I drove past this building every single day on my way to work. I work at a school just down the road. Um, every single day I drive around the roundabout and I just I just kept having these thoughts. Hannah, you should, you need to be there. You need to go back there. Like you loved what you had um, when you went there last time. And I just kept thinking one day I'm gonna get back there one day. Um, and then last Easter Sunday was my first time. I spoke to my partner 
about it, he decided to come with me. We both came last Easter Sunday and I've been every Sunday since. And I know that she's probably not going to like me doing this, but I know Hannah is in the room over here. So come on, Hannah, stand to your feet. That was quick. We did that simply to say this. The building isn't about the building. It's about the people. And so when you give next week, we want to do some stuff in Colchester in the building there. That's why we put it up there. We want to continue on with the purchase of the building in Bury St. Edmunds. Still in the midst of that on planning. It's just taking forever. But once we get it, there'll be work to do by way of planning, further planning and architect's fees. We want to put money towards that. And here in Cambridge, we know it's not the best in the entrance foyer by way of experience for you, booking in your children with long queues, with not being enough space after the service in the coffee shop. We want to make that more of a hospitable, welcoming space for booking in and all of that that we want to do and giving stations. So we're going to give money to reshaping the foyer there with that 250,000. So please pray what you should give next week when we take our vision offering. Right now, we're going to take up our regular tithes and offerings. There's different ways you can give on the screen. If any of you want to sign up for standing order or want to give in cash today, then just raise your hand or use a card. One of our Connect team here who will walk to the front will provide you with an envelope and you can fill it in. Make sure, thank you for your generosity. And those of you that give every week, we're grateful. It's all towards the vision of reaching and shaping a generation with the message and cause of Christ. There's lots coming up in the life of C3, so here's another video for you to watch today. Lots of videos. Have a look at Life at C3. Welcome to Life at C3. Here's what's happening in our church. Our heart is to make sure that our C3 family is directed to events, ministries, and community updates. Tonight at our 5.30 service in our Cambridge location, our guest speaker, Natalie Reunion, will be doing a Q&A session. So make sure you come along, come prepared, and let's get ready to hear the wisdom she has to share with us. We want to remind you that you can join us in prayer this week online or in person in all of our locations. If you have not picked up your prayer and fasting journal, you can do so at Next Steps today. It's never too late to join in. It is only two weeks until we celebrate Easter as a church and we want to make sure you're informed of everything that is happening. On Good Friday, in addition to our Family Fun Day and Sign in the Sky happening in all locations, we will be having a Good Friday service in our Cambridge and Colchester locations at 5.30pm. This special service will be an opportunity for our church to come together to reflect and honour the sacrifice Jesus made for us as well as take communion together. And then on Easter Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, including our 5.30 p.m. service where we'll have an extended time of worship and celebration. And don't forget that you can still sign up to serve on Team Easter at either Good Friday or Easter Sunday. Head to Next Steps for more information. To stay up to date with everything happening at the C3 Church, follow us on social media and sign up to our Life at C3 emails for more details. Well, it really is an honor to introduce our guest speaker today. Let me tell you how this came about. The last few years, we've been getting to know Roy and Keely Morley. Keely's on the front row here. Come on, Keely, just stand there. Keely, with her husband Roy, are senior pastors of Net Church in Dartford, and it's a multi site church across the globe. We initially knew them through Glenn Balfour, who many of you know is a really good friend of ours. And they kept saying we should connect. And we've connected more through the Global Leadership Network. They come to Chicago every year to GLS. By the way, you're all welcome. You've got to pay your own way, but you're all welcome. And the Morleys are there. And we've really got to know them. There's a real sense of their church and our church having a very similar spirit. Even their strap line is people matter. Of course, ours is people really matter, so we're, we're more holy, but theirs is really good as well. And so last year, Keely got in touch and said, we've got Natalie Runyon, I said your name right, coming to the UK. Would you like to have her on on a Sunday? And I said, who's Natalie Runyon? And she said, you've not heard of her. I said, I'll check her out. So I did. In fact, where I went to was to my daughter's. 
to Katie and to Megan and to Becky. Have you ever heard of Natalie? They said, yeah, we follow her on Instagram. She's fantastic. Can you get her? And I said, well, apparently we can. And then we checked her out with Daniel in Colorado because she was based in Colorado Springs for a number of years with, with New Life. And he said, yeah, we know her of Natalie. We don't, we don't know her, but great reputation. And then I started following you. And so it is our pleasure Natalie is an author. I've started reading this book. I can't tell you I've read it all because I'd be lying. Uh, I've, I've read the first part of it, which I'm going to get into. It's called Raised to Stay. One I've already discerned from our Instagram and from this. This lady is a lady who's very honest, very real, very rooted, has seen stuff in the church that is not pleasant, but still loves the church and above all, loves the Lord of the church, Jesus Christ. And that's what she's about. She's going to be with us tonight at the 5.30. You will want to come back. In fact, if you don't come back, I'm not sure you're a Christian. But there we go. You will want to come back tonight after you're here, if you can, Natalie, today. So would you please, you in Kentucky right now, where she lives. Her father is with her here today as well. They're traveling across the UK. First time in the UK. And they love it. So would you please welcome Natalie Rihanna. Thank you. Church, how are we doing this morning? Come on, are you awake with me? Well, first of all, I just want to say a huge welcome to our Colchester and Barry locations who are watching, as well as our online audience and those across the prisons in the UK. Welcome to church. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you. I cannot tell you how much I love your country. I also just love the church. And being part of the global church is one of the most exciting things. You have no idea how blessed you are to be born right now. Because God is raising up a radical remnant in his church that is going to be part of ushering in what I believe is going to be one of the greatest revivals of our church history. The radical remnant, that word radical, the root word of radical means to be rooted to be rooted. If we look in the scriptures, it tells us to be rooted and established in Christ. So that then once we are rooted, we are like a tree that is planted by the water and we will not be moved no matter how many words of deconstruction and how many people try to tear down the church. The church is God's and anything that is God's is good. And so we are part of a, a good thing, a good plan. And so as I come here today, I come here with great honor and the weight of responsibility of the message that God has given me. And I just want to thank your pastors for trusting me. I know it's difficult to hand your platform as a pastor's kid to someone you've never met. And I just thank you for trusting Keely, Pastor Keely and her husband, and inviting me to speak to your people today. So thank you for that. It's always a risk bringing somebody you don't know in. You could get an unauthorized tambourine in somebody's purse. You know, somebody could bring their tape and be like, I'd like to sing Watch the Lamb in the key of D. And we're like, no, we don't need your song. It's okay. So when people invite me in, I, I just want you to know that I carry that um, very heavy on me, knowing that somebody has trusted me with their sheep. So thank you. I grew up in the church, and my dad, who was here with me, we were pastor's family. And my dad did a wonderful job, and my mom as well, of teaching us that this Christian life was going to be a series of radical interruptions. That if you said yes to Jesus, Jesus, you said yes to uh, picking up that cross and following him, that life was going to be full of these unpredictable interruptions. And so as a kid, my dad would pick up hitchhikers and we would just stop where we were and take them. We would go visit shut-ins. I spent Sunday afternoons in nursing homes, going room to room, and every elderly person thought that I was their grandchild, and we would give them communion. And it was this beautiful picture of the church of loving people more than we loved a position. I think longevity in the church comes from loving the people of God more than we love what we get to do for God. Because we have skin in the game, right? When we love the people, man, then they're worth showing up for even when things get hard and they get challenging. And some of my favorite interruptions were when we would go visit the shut-ins or the widows of those who had just recently lost a spouse and they would let me try on all their jewelry and play in their makeup and they had cookies in these blue tins 
all these varieties of different kinds of cookies and they would let me eat the cookies while my mom and dad were praying with them. My first church hurt was when I opened one of those tins and there was sewing supplies inside of it, inside of the cookies. So I grew up loving the church and understanding that if you love something, you might get hurt by it. But I would rather get to heaven and be told that I loved too much than that I didn't love enough. And so over the course of the last 20 years, I've gone from pastor's kid to pastor. And my life has continued to be a series of radical interruptions. And what I have learned in that is that if I will allow myself to be radically interrupted for the people of God, I will encounter miracles. But we get so easily lulled to sleep in our world. We get so easily lulled to sleep by the things of life, just getting church service to church service and event to event that we forget that the miracle is in the middle. That as we are going about our day, going to our jobs, going to school, that God is asking, are you willing to be interrupted for the one? Are you willing to look around you and see the one who is in need, who may not come to your church, but who I need you to take the church to? And so this morning, we are going to dive into the book of Acts. I love the book of Acts as a Pentecostal preacher's kid. I love the Holy Spirit. I love seeing how the church was birthed right before the eyes of the disciples. But we're going to go a little bit further into the book of Acts and talk about a radical interruption that the disciples and the Apostle Paul encountered as they were going out to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost world. We are going to be in Acts 16, 16 through 18. One day, as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a young slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her and Instantly, it left her. God, we thank you for your word. God, I thank you, Lord, that even now it's active and alive and it's, it fights for us, God. Your word, it fights on our behalf, Lord. I, I pray that today that your Holy Spirit would just come into this place, Lord, and fall on hearts that are ready to receive your word. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Let my words be your words and your words alone. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, a little backstory on the book of Acts. This is a beautiful book that covers the work of the apostles in the early days following Christ's death. The first part of Acts follows Peter and his ministry to the Gentiles, and the second part of Acts follows Paul leading up to him being martyred. Now, in the scriptures before this encounter that we just read about, Apostle Paul and these guys, they encounter a woman named Lydia at a prayer meeting. Now, how many love a good prayer meeting, right? You just love, you're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to tonight. I look forward to worship nights. So these men were at this prayer meeting and they meet a woman named Lydia. And Luke records this in Acts 16, 15, that as she, Lydia, listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. She and her household were baptized and she asked us to be her guest. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. Home, and she urged us until we agreed. Now, have you ever led somebody to Jesus before? Isn't it the most amazing, just most spectacular moment of your life when someone says yes to this Jesus that you know has the answer to everything that they need? And I imagine that the Apostle Paul and all of these guys, Paul, Silas, that they were riding this high after being at the house of Lydia because this message of Jesus Christ, it worked that they were praying and this woman comes to understand who Jesus Christ is because of this message that they had been carrying with them. They not only baptized her, but her entire household comes to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And it's in that moment that they're like, man, let's just get to the next meeting. Let's get to the next prayer meeting and keep telling people about Jesus. What if this happens everywhere we go? But then Luke tells us of a radical interruption on their way to the next prayer meeting. He goes on to say that one day, as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. Now, have you ever noticed how Satan will not try to interrupt you on your way to a birthday party, on your way to a sporting event, on your way to go to a kid's school play? Satan will let you go. There will be no traffic. Everybody will be just fine. You'll get there early, as a matter of fact. 
But if you are trying to get to church on a Sunday morning, if you're trying to get to a Bible study, suddenly there's a wreck on the highway. Or your children don't know how to dress themselves. Or your husband can't find that thing that we've always been able to find. Something will always go down because Satan will always try to disrupt a house that prays. That prays. He will always try to attack a house that prays. Because he doesn't want the people of God to gather. And so he will do everything in his power to keep you from getting here. How many this morning were like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You overslept. You were trying to get coffee and you realized that nothing opens until 10. I learned that today. (laughs) Satan will always try to stop you from getting to a place where you may encounter the living God. Where you may be set free. And he will always try to stop the ones you're trying to bring with you. But here they are, they're on their way to the next prayer meeting and they encounter a young girl who is enslaved in more than one way. She is enslaved by her masters who are using her to make money. She is enslaved by the demon that is within her and she is enslaved by her sin. Now, every single day, you and I are walking the streets and we are encountering encountering people just like this. They are enslaved to the master of this world. They are enslaved to their addiction. They are enslaved to their anxiety and their depression. They are enslaved by the things that they have made their God. And every day they are walking around this world weighed down by the weight of what they are carrying. They are also possibly even demonically possessed or oppressed. Have you ever walked by somebody and you felt your spirit check? You know something's not right there. You know something isn't right there. And yet you walk past it and you think, oh, what did I just discern? We also have people who are enslaved by their sin. You and I, before we knew Jesus Christ, were enslaved by our sin. But when we came to say yes to Jesus, we were set free from that bondage of sin. And my question for us is, when is the last time we have walked by someone who has been enslaved by these three things and our spirit has been grieved? We have wanted to stop on our way to the next thing, to turn and to look at them and to ask them, how are you doing today? Could I buy you a cup of coffee? Tell me about your life, what's going on? When is the last time we have been grieved by the sin of this world, when we've allowed our hearts to break for the very thing that breaks the heart of our Father? We have people in our immediate families right now, those who don't know Jesus and we're sitting across from them at dinner tables and at holidays and we're looking at them and we're wondering when are they gonna come to know Jesus and we're afraid to touch the subject because we don't wanna offend anyone, but it's this radical interruption that God is inviting us into to tell them about the one who has the answers, the one who has this peace that we just sang about. This young girl, she was making a lot of money for her masters telling fortunes and she was being taken advantage of and she was being abused and mistreated and she's following Paul around screaming at the top of her lungs, these men are servants of the most high God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. It's in this one sentence that we hear an evil spirit bearing witness to the truth of who God is. She is echoing orthodox theology. What this tells us is that the enemy can speak truth when it behooves him. This is why we have to be so wise. We have to be so discerning to know the voice of our enemy versus the voice of the Lord. We have to be so in tune that when we hear the enemy speaking through others, we're able to say, that's not my father. That's not his word. That's not his voice. And Paul turns and the scriptures say that he was so exasperated. That doesn't mean he's annoyed. It doesn't mean that he is um, being intolerant. It means that he is so grieved by the state of this young girl that he stops. Now, why is this so important? How many of you have ever been to a country where it's illegal to be a Christian? My dad right here, he used to go to China and take Bibles over to China. They had to wrap them like birthday gifts because if they were caught, they could be sent to prison or worse. Imagine my dad going into the middle of the square in China, trying to just be there, getting to the next thing, just trying to look like a tourist, and there's somebody following behind him saying, this is Ron and he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Immediately he would be taken in and either put in prison or killed. Paul and Silas should not have been there. They were Jewish men in a place where they did not belong. And the spirit is following behind them, announcing to the entire city who they are. It would have made complete sense for Paul and Silas to run. 
and to say, we just need to get to the next city because we're not wanted here. But Paul was so grieved by the condition of this young girl that he stopped what he was doing and he didn't have to Google. He didn't have to look up how to cast out a demon. He literally looked and through the power that he had, he said, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her and it instantly left her because demons cannot stay where the word of God is. They cannot stand against the name of Jesus. Well, because of this, the masters get angry and they begin to scream at the crowds and they say in the scriptures that the whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. And because Paul and Silas were Jewish, they were immediately taken and beaten and thrown into a jail cell with a guard to keep watch over them. And this is where the story gets good and where a lot of us love to start the story is that around midnight, they began to sing some songs. Around midnight, they began to worship, and they didn't sing songs of lament, though that would have made sense. They weren't saying, oh, woe is us. Why are people so mean to Christians? Why is everybody against us? They started singing prayers and praises to their God, and it was in that moment that there was an earthquake that didn't trap everybody in place, but flung off their chains, flew open those doors, and as the jailer looks up, he realizes, oh my goodness, everybody's going to escape, so he grabs his sword to kill himself, and Paul screams, no, don't. Don't, don't kill yourself. We're all still here. Why is that important? In Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, the very first church is about to be birthed right in front of everyone. And it says in those scriptures that the disciples agreed together in prayer that they were going to be in this to the very end. They were going to be in this to the very end. The very gospel that had just put their savior on a cross, though he resurrected, they knew that if they took this same message of Jesus Christ out to the world, that their fate might be the same. And they had to decide in that upper room that no matter how hard it got, no matter how many people betrayed them, no matter how hurt they got, that they were going to stay in position for the joy set before them because their Savior on the cross stayed for the joy set before him. And he did not call 10,000 of angels to come down and get him. Though he could have, he endured, he remained, he stayed for the joy set before him. And so Paul and Silas, they're demonstrating that even in hard places, we're going to stay, we're going to remain, we're going to tarry because there is somebody who needs to meet our God who is going to shake the very foundation of our political systems and all of the things of this world and fling wide the chains that they are in so that they can know this God, that they can know of this saving God. And so Paul screams, stop, don't kill yourself. We're all still here. It says then that the jailer comes to know the Lord much like the house of Lydia because Paul and Silas remained in position. I think of others in the Bible who stayed in difficult places. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in that fire, but there was a fourth man there. We have Daniel in the lion's den who was threatened to be eaten by the lions, but God shut the mouths of the enemy. We see Moses and Noah, and we see others and Jesus on difficult situations, but they remained in position to allow God to reveal his true power. So many of us are getting up and getting out because it's hard, it's uncomfortable, but what we are missing is the miracle that is following the discomforts. We have to understand that what feels like it's going to be our death, what feels like it's going to be our crucifixion is actually just the beginning of a resurrection. And that if we will remain in position, the Holy Spirit will show up in those difficult spaces and reveal his true power through you, not by your own might, not by your own strength, but by the power of the living God who wants to show off and show up in miraculous situations to reveal his identity. But we're getting up because we get offended. I say all the time that the church doesn't know how to bear a burden, but we certainly know how to pick up an offense. Because offense gives us a victim mentality. It allows us to get a little bit of attention. But when we begin to walk in authority, when we begin to walk in power, people don't understand that until they begin to see the miracle that is following this absolute resolution that we are not going to cave. We are not going to quit just because it gets difficult. Christians, we are not called to sit in the comfort. We are called to remain in the discomfort so that God can make himself known. The jailer looks at the men and he says, tell me, what must I do to be saved? This is the question we want everyone asking us, church. Not, 
oh, what's your job? And, and how did you get all of this that you have? And how are you writing books? And, and how are you traveling? No, it's who do you know? Who do you know that's given you peace in the cancer diagnosis? Who do you know that's given you joy in the middle of, of all of this pain? How do you trust the Lord when that prodigal isn't coming home anytime soon it appears? How do you have this peace in uncomfortable positions and all we have to say is Jesus? And then that earthquake begins to shake and their chains begin to fall just simply at that name of Jesus. And I love how the Lord even now is scouring the earth looking for men and women who will sit with each other in difficult situations and praise them through the night. Praise them through the discomfort. Praise with them. They won't leave them when it gets hard. Listen, I know that it's difficult to be inconvenienced. We've got children, we've got jobs, we've, we've got things that we wanna do, just boom, 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 I gotta get to the next thing. But we are missing out on an opportunity to partner with Jesus Christ in miracles. Every time we are in a hurry to get to the next thing, we are forgetting that this in-between space is where God is inviting us to partner with him in feeding a multitude. I love how Paul and Silas did four things in both the house of Lydia and in the house of the jailer that is so applicable for us today. How can we remain in these difficult positions and also serving one another if we're not on a church staff, if it's not our job? They did four things that I want to share with you. The first thing they did is they simply delivered the word of God. But in order to deliver the word of God, we have to know the word of God. And so if we're going to tell people about Jesus, we have to know Jesus. They delivered the word of God in a way that was, a, was an invitation to them to not condemn them, to not shame them, to not run away, but they introduced them to a God who saves. That is all we have to do when we don't know what to say. We tell them about our Savior. The second thing that they did is they served. A lot of times we quit because we don't have anyone who is watching for us. Did you know that people are looking for you when you come to C3 Church? There are people looking for your face. They want to get a hug. They want to know you. They want to know that you know them. Simply showing up and parking cars and greeting in the parking lot, volunteering in kids ministry, being part of worship. These are all ways that we can serve one another and introduce them to a God who also serves. Finally, and the last two is they baptized. I will never forget being in Florida about a month ago and I was on a boat with a bunch of church people and we were just having a day off going through the ocean and out of the corner of my eye I, I see this old fisherman's boat getting off of the shore and two men are getting out and I thought what are they doing over there and I see them get in the water all of these boats are kind of parked watching and we didn't really know what we were witnessing and all of a sudden I see this man get next to the other man in their street clothes just their normal clothes and he starts talking to him and then I see him lower him into the water and bring him up. And the boats, not knowing what they witnessed, us knowing what we witnessed, all began to cheer in those ocean waters along with heaven as that man raised from death to life. And the boats started honking their horns and everybody was celebrating because some friend was willing to be inconvenienced on a Saturday morning to get into his boat, to drive his friend to the ocean and baptize him. You don't have to wait to do it in the church. Do it in bathtubs. Do it in hot tubs. Do it in public pools. Whatever we have to do to show people that there is life after death. Get them up. And the last thing that they did is they shared a meal. Come on, church people. We know how to do this. Some of you have the gift of mac and cheese. You need to keep bacon for us because that's a spiritual gift. We know how to eat. If you don't know how to do any of the other things, have a meal with someone. Invite them into your home. Let them see how you live. Let them see the God that rules and reigns in your home. Take them out to eat. Serve them with that food and all that generosity, that, that freedom of generosity. But I am not naive enough to think that even some of us in the room right now, that we are saying, look, I just feel like I'm always the one sitting with people and I just need someone to speak Jesus over my life today. I need somebody who's willing to be radically interrupted for me right now in this moment. And so as we prepare to close out this morning, the invitation is simple. If you are sitting in a prison cell right now and you need someone to speak Jesus over your life, he is here. And so if you will, if you'll just stand with me across this room right now, if we can all just stand to our feet. I wanna invite the prayer team forward and here's the beauty of this moment. Just because we're church people doesn't mean that we don't come carrying our own chains. We don't care, come carrying sin that has been holding us down. Just because we 
follow Jesus doesn't mean that we aren't without our prison moments. And so as the prayer team makes their way down here, we want to speak Jesus over any of you right now who just need someone to sit with you in the tension of your prison. Maybe it's a diagnosis, maybe it's a prodigal, maybe it's an addiction, maybe there's something that you haven't talked to anybody about and you just are tired of doing it on your own. Christians are notorious for being extremely difficult to come to the altar because we don't want people to know we're in pain, but I am telling you right now that where two or more are gathered, he is with us and there are people who want to lower you down to your healer right now. And so with every eye closed, in this place. If you are here right now and you're saying, look, I know Jesus, but I feel like I've lost that connection with him, that when I try to pray, when I try to talk to him, I just don't even know what the next step is. And I want to be reconnected to that vine. I wanna know Jesus. If that's you, raise your hand. I wanna be in community with Jesus. I wanna be reconnected. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanna know him. I wanna be known by him. There's hands going up, thank you. We're gonna pray together now and then we're gonna dismiss. But if you need prayer, we want you to come forward. And if you will, just repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I love you. I want to serve you. Come and be Lord of my life. Rule and reign. I want to take up my cross and follow you. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. I want to serve you and know you and live with you for eternity. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Come on, if that's you this morning and you want to come forward for prayer, we want you to come forward now and begin to let other people just love on you. I have learned that hungry people are desperate people. So if you are desperate for the move of God in your life, you just want to pray and have someone love on you, just start coming. It'll just take one of you walking out of obedience to give the others permission to do so. Come on, if you want more of Jesus, more of that peace that passes all understanding in your prison, we want you to come forward. Thank you, sir. This is amazing to see those who are willing to come forward and say, yes, I just want someone to pray with me in my midnight. Come on, let's extend our hands forward for those who have come. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you meet us in the prisons. We thank you that you meet us in those difficult spaces. We thank you that your arm is not too short, God, that even as we mourn, even as we find ourselves in discomfort, God, that you meet with us. God, thank you for the body of Christ who partners with us in our darkness. Thank you for the body of Christ who sits with us in the difficult spaces. Even more are coming now. Even more are coming now. We thank you, Father, for your freedom. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you meet us where we are. God, thank you that you see us when nobody else has seen us. Thank you that you hear us when it feels like nobody else can hear us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, the band's going to start singing, and let's just worship together. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every
So what do we do? We double down on praying for healing. Because we still believe in a God who heals. Because the tough times don't cause us to back out. The tough times cause us to push in. So if you need healing, this team here will pray for healing. If you've got a, a sin that is dominating your life like Natalie talked about, then there's a breakthrough atmosphere for you today where you can be prayed for and see a breakthrough in that area of your sin in your life. If you've got something that's mastering you, that shouldn't be mastering you, then today there could be a breakthrough in your life. If you prayed that prayer earlier, devotion to Jesus for the first time as a recommitment, please go to our next step stand at the end. Tell them you did that. We'd love to give you the Gospel of Luke and talk with you some more. But we're going to sing this song. This is a song of declaration. And if you need prayer by way of breakthrough in your life, then the team's available and ready for you. Natalie's book, I think, is here. Am I, am I right? Raise to Stay. It's her story. And I'd like us tonight, we're going to interview her. We're going to delve a little bit into her story of the church hurts and how she's learned through that to overcome and to still love the church and love the body of Christ and to be standing strong and declaring like she's today. So as we sing Jehovah, if you still need prayer by way of breakthrough in your life, then please, can we give Natalie a round of applause? Thank you, Natalie. And listen, if you've been prayed for a thousand times, then make it a thousand and one. Do you hear me? Don't be put off by what I prayed before because there are moments when God does stuff, particularly when the church is gathered, that can happen for you today. So you come and get prayer. Come on, let's worship and sing Jehovah. God bless you. See you soon. Come on, let's clap our hands today.
fight your battles Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles That's God Almighty Warrior Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles Jehovah Jireh, beat your knees Jehovah Rapha, heal your body Jehovah Shalom, be your peace Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles Jehovah Jireh, beat your knees Jehovah Rapha, heal your body Jehovah Shalom, be your peace Jehovah Nisi Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles Jehovah Jireh, meets your knees and we'll see you next week. Bye. Hello Church Online UK. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Phil and I'm the Location Pastor for Church Online and I want to give you a big welcome if you are new. If you are new, say hello in the chat below and we would love to get to know you, to introduce ourselves and to chat. Maybe you said that prayer of commitment to Jesus for the first time. We want to celebrate with you. Say yes in the chat and make sure you head over to those links and fill in that form so we can send you a great decision celebration pack that basically says we love you, we celebrate you, we want to invest in your life and we want to pray for you. So make sure you do fill that in today. Here is a counter of how many people have said that prayer so far that we know this year and I think it's three. We want to celebrate those people and those journeys with us today. Um, some things to talk about online. We have started a brand new online group this week and we will meet monthly. The next date is on the screen. Let's put it around here. Uh, so make sure you head over to that link to check it out, to join up because we are meeting regularly to discuss the Bible and pray. This is a great way to get to know each other online and there are people all around the world who are joining that today. We would love to take the opportunity right now to pray for you for a blessing or for a need. And please do not underestimate the value of prayer for either one of those things. It's so easy for us to think, oh, you know, my problem's too small or I really am not wanting to ask for that. I don't wanna bother someone. We are here to pray for you. So make sure you put it in the chat or there's uh, other ways in which you can ask for prayer as well, which will appear on the screen after I'm finished talking here. So make sure you do ask for prayer if you want a blessing or if you need it today. Thank you once again, Church Align, for joining us. I will see you online soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>